I recently made some really optimistic statements about this Google update based on what Google said they were trying to do. But now it really looks like Google is failing us. We've made every effort really from the very beginning to create really helpful content that should fit even the guidelines Google's created since we first started. And yet we're seeing these kinds of results in some cases. And I'm sure that many of you are trying to do your best to follow Google's guidelines too. And yet today the SERPs are filled with AI results with questionable accuracy, unhelpful forum answers, and big corporate sites with answers that are really quite thin, right? I mean, I have to admit that we do see video content too. And yes, we see articles from other blogs too, but it's mostly just big blogs that have been around for a long time. Google won't give little sites a chance. And with this latest update, it just feels like another nail in the coffin. I mean, is blogging finally dead this time? I'm gonna say yes. Well, at least with this caveat. And I'm gonna warn you, this may come across a little bit blunt. Blogging is dead if you're one, lazy or unwilling to put in real effort. Two, if you have nothing of value to offer beyond what's already on the web. Or three, if you're doing the right things but you have the expectation of instant results. If any one of those three things is true, it's time to reevaluate your decision to try to use blogging to make an income or it's time to reevaluate your approach to how you're doing your blogging. My wife is a big fan of Brandon Sanderson books. If you don't know who Brandon Sanderson is, it's time to get out from under the rock. Actually, no, I get it. Not every genre of fiction is everybody else's cup of tea. So there are probably tons of people out there that don't know Brandon Sanderson, but he is an incredibly popular and famous fiction author. During 2021, as you can imagine, a lot of people, you may have been one of them, were very frustrated and not making a whole lot of progress in their life. Things were closed. People couldn't hardly travel. It was hard to get a whole lot of things done. And if you got laid off from a job, like good luck finding a new one in an environment where you're not allowed to be within six feet of anybody else. Well, during this time, even as an author, Brandon was negatively impacted. He wasn't able to travel around like he normally does, which is how you go about promoting your books. Being able to interact with fans, doing interviews, those kinds of things are really important for authors. He couldn't do them. So, like a lot of other people, he sat at home, depressed, and mostly just complained on social media about how unfair life was for him, right? Wrong, that's not it at all. Instead, Brandon kept up with what he had committed to publish. He had, literally, he still had publishers that were expecting him to meet certain deadlines. He kept up with all that. And he wrote an extra five books that year that nobody knew anything about. I mean, except for his, like literally his family. Last year, he released four of those books as part of a Kickstarter campaign that he started back in 2022. So in 2021, he writes a bunch of extra books. In 2022, he comes out and says, I wrote a bunch of extra books and I wanna get them to you, but I wanna do it different. Starts a Kickstarter campaign and literally breaks every record on Kickstarter. Now, Brandon Sanderson was already a very successful author, but in the two years since he published this video, this video where he announced those extra books, he has blown up. So why in the world am I talking about Brandon Sanderson as I'm talking about Google failing us or bloggers being lazy or not having anything to offer? The other day, my wife was watching a lecture that Brandon gave about writing fiction. And one thing he said really stood out to me. He said that to be published as an author, presumably as, as a fiction author, that's the genre that he's familiar with, you basically have to write consistently for about 10 years before you're ever gonna get picked up by a publisher. 10 years. It just takes that long to really dial in your skills. It takes that long to start building up a network. It takes that long to get dialed in. It takes that long to make the right connections. It takes that long to get noticed and to create something different enough and good enough that people are going to want it. Yet, I hear from people all the time who say, well, this doesn't work because I tried blogging and after six months, nothing happened. Even in many cases after a year or even two years, people are giving up, they're throwing in the towel and they're saying this process doesn't work. Let me tell you something. If you're new to this and if you're not able to put in a consistent effort, even during those six to 12 months, chances are 
it's not going to work. It's because consistency is key. Not because Google's algorithm wants you to be publishing on a specific schedule, but because consistency is what's necessary for you to acquire the skills you need to acquire and for you to get really good at creating the kind of content that is actually helpful and that is actually original. Real success as a business owner requires that you have at least these three things. Now, I'm not talking about successfully ranking some blog posts or being able to buy a bunch of backlinks and, and get your website to rank really, 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 really fast. That's not actual success because that kind of success is very fleeting. I'm talking about something that generates a real income and that lasts. And building something like that does require these three things. Sure, you also need, in addition to those three things that I'm about to talk about, you do need to acquire the right skill sets. You do need to acquire the right experience. There are, there are other things that are necessary, but these three things, without all of them, chances of success are basically zero. Number one is work, hard work, but also very importantly, consistent work. Now in this lecture, Brandon didn't say that you need to be an author full-time, that you need to write for eight hours a day for 10 years to get published. What he did say though, was that you need to write consistently, ideally daily, but even if it's 30 minutes, because you can only dedicate 30 minutes to it, or maybe it's an hour over a lunch break where you're kind of working on outlining some aspect of your story, but you're working on that story and you're working on writing and refining the skills of writing and actually doing it. I'm not talking about like spending time every day researching how to be a good writer. I'm talking about spending every day doing some of your writing. It takes actually practicing the skill to get good at the skill. So if all you have to give is 30 minutes of writing, then over the course of those 10 years, you can become a good enough author to be able to publish a fiction book with a real publisher. I'm not talking about self-publishing on Amazon. Similar is true with blogging, except you don't have to get noticed by a publisher to be successful as a blogger. You just have to learn how to create helpful content. Your very first article might get picked up and published and shown on Google in, on page one of Google search. It might happen really, really, really quickly, but it certainly won't happen if you don't get started writing. And even if it doesn't happen with your first 30 articles, because frankly, they're probably just not as good as what you're gonna be creating in six months, if you actually work on this every day, even if that's what happens, by doing the writing, you're gonna be honing these skills and you're gonna become a much better writer. And the content that you do publish is gonna do better. Now I showed you the Google search console at the beginning of a website, one of our websites, and it dropped off quite a bit. And I went into the Google search console and I looked. And you know what? The search queries that I'm still winning, the ones that I didn't lose, they're the articles I personally wrote without any help from any other writer. And I'm not saying you can't use other writers, I'm not saying you can't use AI, but the articles that I wrote because of the practice that I have as a writer, they were better, they were more helpful. And today, they're the ones still performing really well on the website, even though many of the other articles that we published, they, they dropped completely. Like, it's not like Google just hates the site and manually penalized it. It's just that those other articles objectively are just not as helpful. Now, I'm not good at writing just because I've written tons of blog posts. The key is consistency, and consistency matters a lot more than amount. If you do a little bit of writing every day, or you know, you, you publish only one blog post a week, but you spent time on it every day of the week, you're gonna get far better than if you just do a blogging writing marathon once a month. Speaking of blogging marathons, feels like there's something there. Now, the second thing you just have to have is you need to figure out what it is that you have to give. It doesn't do a whole lot of good online to just give people more of the same, of what's already there. Now, what that doesn't mean is that you need to pick a topic or a niche for your website that is totally original. Nobody else has ever covered this. You don't have to only answer search queries that are completely non-competitive. Nobody else has ever answered that question. But what you should have is your own perspective and your content should reflect that. What this requires is that whatever it is you're gonna write about, you need to have personal experience or be willing to get personal experience. If you wanna take the approach of a beginner going through the process of learning a new skill, that's fine. 
but that's the perspective that all of your content should come through. And that kind of content is incredibly helpful because a lot of the time, the people that already know that skill really well, they forget what it was like to not know it and they're really bad at teaching it to beginners. Oftentimes a beginner I recognizes these are all of the things that were hard. Let me tell you how I overcame that. And it's super helpful. But it can also be really beneficial to be someone who has a lot of experience. But maybe your experience just comes from life experience and not from a formal education. Well, that's great too. Life experience brings different perspectives than formal education does. Or maybe you're the person that does have the formal education and it's something that you do in your career and you just know a ton about it and you're set, you can talk about this all day long and you know everything, cool. Well, you can provide insights that neither the beginner nor the life experience only person can provide. Each one of those perspectives is unique. Add to that so many other variables. Being the person you are in the life situation that you're in, you are going to have a different approach and a different perspective to your topic than anybody else. So lean into that. Do something original that adds original value to the internet instead of just copying what's already there. I've been saying this for years and still, most of the blog content I see on the web is They've taken, they've done the Google search for the query that they're trying to rank for. They go look at the top five blog posts and see what they did. And they just kind of combine all that into one new blog post. And that's the new blog post. And for a long time, that actually worked really well because your blog post had the best points from all five of the others that were already there. But today, Google sees that and is like, well, that doesn't add anything new. It doesn't add anything original. It's just copied. And sometimes you'll win, but a lot of the time you won't. The third thing is to set realistic expectations for yourself and work on internalizing those expectations. We have had a timeline of about 24 months. That's why we call our program Project 24. 24 months for a blogger to start from the beginning and get to a full-time-ish income of about $4,000 a month. Now, is that timeline still accurate? Well, it's really hard to say. We have members who get there a lot faster or who achieve just way higher dollar amounts in that same amount of time. But I would say for the average brand new blogger, first time through this, they're probably not going to hit it on that timeline. Not most of the time. Sometimes, but not most of the time. That's because things have changed. It's harder now than it was even just a couple of years ago. And if you're only willing to rely on written blog content and organic traffic, I'm talking you're not willing to do any kind of social media, you're not interested in making video content, you're super nervous and don't wanna go get interviewed on a podcast, you just wanna write blog posts and rely on search engines to do their job. Well, there's a good chance that that timeline is gonna extend beyond 24 months, and that's okay. And if that's you, there's still hope. You can build real credibility with consistent and helpful content. A domain authority that's built overnight is about as resilient as a sandcastle on the beach. As soon as the tides start to shift, the sandcastle washes away. Real domain authority comes from consistently publishing good, helpful content over an extended period of time. When we said in the beginning that we are definitely seeing several blog posts showing up on page one of Google, but it's only those big, well-established blogs. Well, where do you think those came from? They're big and they're well-established because they stood out when there were a whole bunch of brand new recipe blogs showing up on the internet, there were a handful of them that did a better job than everybody else, that took a slightly different approach than everybody else, and that made their content of a higher quality than everyone else. And those are the ones that are still around today, and they're the ones that rank for everything. <laughs> you can become that, it's not too late, but it's not gonna happen overnight. And it's gonna be rare that you're gonna outrank one of those kinds of existing, well-established blogs in the short term but eventually you will for many, many different search queries because they're gonna be the places where your angle, your perspective is more helpful for the user. You have a lot to add and there are essentially an infinite number of questions people can ask in search and most of them don't have any content written for them. I can't tell you how many things I still search for every single day where I'm looking for somebody to help me with something and I'm getting a bunch of forum results in Google and I click on those and they don't actually really help me. It, this happened to me this weekend on a couple of different things. I keep scrolling until I find blog posts, still no answer. It blows my mind 
just how much stuff there is that is still not answered on the internet today. Just remember this, blogging should not be used as a scheme to get rich quick, but I still find it incredibly helpful for building an audience and generating a great income. Just don't be lazy in your approach to blogging and don't expect to become a millionaire overnight. The phrase, easy come, easy go, that's a thing, it's well known for a reason. So ask yourself, what kind of creator do you really wanna be? Do you wanna be the kind of creator that creates something mediocre and then just tries to, tries to trick an algorithm into giving you as much money as possible before it figures out just how unextraordinary your content really is? If that's the case, fantastic. Feel free to join in with most people creating content for the web today. Or do you wanna be the kind of creator that actually creates something that actually helps someone? Something that actually has real value and will continue to have that real value for years to come? Something that people will want to support because it's just that good? I paid like $500 to get those four books from Brandon Sanderson and to get his cool gift boxes and we got the audio books. Why? Because his books are really just that good. His stories are really just that good. And I knew that beforehand. I don't buy into that kind of stuff. I don't overpay for products from basically anybody, but I did in this case. And you know what? I think it was worth it because he creates content that I really like. He creates content that my wife really likes. And we're able to get a lot of enjoyment out of that and be part of something really cool. And because we wanted to support him because we love what he's given us. You don't have to be Brandon Sanderson to be an excellent blogger, but think like Brandon. Create something great and be willing to put in the time and the effort and create something original instead of just doing whatever it takes to try to get something out there as quickly as possible and then wonder why nobody wants it. All right, that's it. I'm gonna get down from my soapbox. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you'll join us for our next video where we'll be sharing with you more helpful advice on how to create helpful content. See you there.